This is part two of my video series on troubleshooting and repairing the air suspension in a W109 Mercedes. If you haven't seen part one yet, I highly recommend you watch that first. That'll give you a little bit of background on my own uh, 300 SEL 3.5 here and some of the frustrations I've been having with it trying to get the suspension to work properly. But before we get this thing up on the lift and start pulling out the valves, I want to talk about theory and I want to just show you some of the components that make up this system on the bench here because they're a little bit easier to see on the bench than they are mounted in the car. First off, at the heart of the system is a compressor pump. And this compressor pump is mounted right below the alternator on the front of the engine and it is driven by a belt, similar to the alternator. And this compressor produces enough compressed air that it will help to manage the air going to the different parts of the suspension. It leaves that compressor and goes into a reservoir tank. Now this reservoir tank here is mounted right behind the headlights on the left front fender and you can see there's a there's an air inlet and there's an air outlet. The compressed air goes into the tank and then it leaves the tank and moves up to the main valve. Now the main valve here you can see is mounted right on the left fender inner panel and look at all the lines coming out of it. These go to the various leveling valves on the suspension and the main purpose of the main valve is to control the ride height of the vehicle and also to direct compressed air to each one of the suspension air bags. Now you're looking at a spring. Now if you've been around cars you know particularly Mercedes they've been using springs uh, for the suspension in their cars for years and years and years and the W109 does not use a spring like this. It uses a rubber airbag like you see here. See that? There's a, there's a tank and then this rubber bag, uh, this bolts up to the subframe and then this part bolts on to the, uh, you know, the, either the front suspension arm or the rear arms. And so when the compressed air enters this tank, it fills the airbag and raises the car, plus it gives it that real soft ride. But when you corner hard, it'll tighten it up so you won't get a lot of body roll. Now, to control the roll of the car and to keep the ride height right, you have a number of leveling valves underneath the car, and you can see the rods and how they they work as the car goes up and down. This controls the amount of compressed air going in to this airbag here. And there's all kinds of problems that you can have. The number one issue are leaks. And if you haven't worked on the system, the first thing you want to do is inspect for just normal air leaks. You can have leaks in the tank. There's a Schrader valve right here that uh, you can release the pressure from the tank and sometimes a Schrader valve will leak. There's a check valve going into the tank and if that check valve is not working properly, air will leak out of the tank. You could have leaks in any num number of the fittings going into the main valve and the leveling valves on the suspension. So what I do when I get a car like this, the first thing I do is get the suspension pumped up and then get soapy water and start putting it all over all the fittings, all the bags, and you will be able to tell immediately when you have a leak. I have a friend who also has a 300 SEL 4.5. He just put on rebuilt valves and his suspension is not working properly. So I suspect a leak. So we're going to try to get that car into the shop here and we'll go over the whole process of how to check for external air leaks. Now I've already done that on my 300 SEL 3.5. I know I've replaced the airbags. I've replaced all the O-rings and all the fittings for all the lines. And I've checked for external leaks. So the problem is not external leaks. It's going to end up being an internal leak inside one of these valves. And uh, these type of leaks will literally drive you crazy. So Martin has figured out 
that there's a design flaw in the valve and he has had some special parts CNC machined which are an upgraded part to the factory internals in these valves. So in the next part in this series, we're going to get the car up into the air. I'll show you up close how the valves are mounted and then we're going to take them off and get them boxed up and shipped off to Martin.